Hi there and welcome back to the Pilot Aware YouTube channel. This is the second part of the introduction to the Pilot Aware Atom Grid Ground Network and the Pilot Aware Eco Structure. As was described in part one, Pilot Aware is not only an inexpensive electronic conspicuity device, but it is also an infrastructure that includes a fully encrypted ground network using two-way communications to provide the most comprehensive and interoperable electronic conspicuity system today. If you haven't already seen part one, please view that video first to get the most out of this and future videos. As a recap, let's remind ourselves what the Atom Grid Network does. The atoms are the ground stations and the grid is the encrypted network that links them all together across the UK and increasingly in mainland Europe. The Atom Grid Station provides as much integration between systems as possible. This is done by collecting all forms of electronic conspicuity and relaying them to all in-range pilot-aware units. There are three antennas. The first antenna receives all transmissions from FLAM, OGN trackers and fan-net equipped aircraft. This is done directly and at close to the speed of light with no perceivable latency. The second antenna receives all transmissions from aircraft transmitting on the aviation band. This includes Mode C, Mode S and ADS-B out technologies. The third antenna is a receive and transmit antenna that operates on the regulated 869.5 MHz band. Using this, the locations of all aircraft picked up by the first antennas are rebroadcast to the pilot aware units, which will then see all transmitting aircraft. Those that are picked up directly and those that are relayed from the Atom Grid network. The Atom Station is also fed with MLAP data, which is used to provide positional information to in-flight pilot-aware units for mode S transmissions that do not provide GPS coordinates. So the Atom Grid network is very good at providing a level of interoperability between the legacy systems that have been voluntarily installed by pilots throughout Europe. But that is only part of the power of the Atom Grid network. In this video, we want to show you that whilst installing an electronic conspicuity device of your choice is a great idea, there are other things that need to be considered and understood. The first major consideration is obscuration. No matter which device you install, all electronic conspicuity signals operate in the high frequency bands which require electromagnetic line of sight to work properly. If something gets in the way, this signal will be attenuated or weakened at best and blocked or obscured at worst. The first thing that will obscure signals is any dense material such as metals and carbon fibre. In addition, fluids will attenuate the signals such as fuel and pilots and passengers who are made up of 70% water as well. In this video we will consider two types of obscuration and how the pilot aware atom grid helps to overcome the adverse effects that this causes to electronic conspicuity. Firstly, let's have a look at local airframe obscuration. Let's assume that we have a carry-on device of choice. It doesn't matter which brand you use. Let's also assume that that device transmits isotropically. That is, it radiates equally in all directions, like the ripples in a pond when you throw a stone in, but in three dimensions. They don't act exactly like that, but the approximation is good for this example. Now let's wrap a metal aeroplane around the device, which has been poorly sighted on the back luggage compartment. Here you will see that the majority of the transmitting signals are obscured by the airframe and the device will perform very badly. To overcome this, most carry-on devices should be placed on the dashboard or if possible be equipped with remote internal antennas placed in the cockpit with a better outside view. This as you can see is much better although there will still be obscuration to the rear and somewhat downwards. It may be obvious that a better solution in a metal or carbon aeroplane is to install external antennas and so it is. However please remember that all electronic conspicuity antennas must be vertically polarised to work properly, positioning them horizontally will just not work. 
In the UK, all permit aircraft on the BMAA or the LAA register are permitted to install external antennas. We're also working closely with the European regulator so that this can soon be done on EASA registered aircraft as well. The same goes for the GPS location information transmitted from satellites in low Earth orbit. If the GPS receiver in your electronic conspicuity device cannot see enough satellites, usually a minimum of four, then it will stop working as it fails to get a reasonable fix. Again, it is vital to move the GPS so it has a good line of sight of the upper atmosphere for the correct operation of all EC devices. It's really important to consider your individual installation, no matter what system you use. A poor installation will result in obscuration, leading to your system not working efficiently and leaving you with a false sense of security that others can see you at all times, when they will not. So, check your installation to ensure that your device is positioned properly and hence working correctly. The second type of obscuration that needs to be considered is the more obvious topographical obscuration caused when flying in mountains at low level or beyond the electromagnetic horizon. In this screenshot, transmissions from aircraft A will be completely obscured from aircraft B by the mountain and vice versa. This is a problem for both air-to-air -air and air-to-ground transmissions, which both need to be addressed. Having an extensive encrypted ground network such as the Pilot Aware Atom Grid Network can help to provide answers to the problems of both types of signal obscuration between aircraft. The more stations that are installed will obviously provide site redundancy and network resilience. In addition, by connecting all stations together via fast internet allows data to be interchanged between stations to increase visual range and more importantly to reduce obscuration. Consequently, all Atom Grid stations are equipped with software to provide cooperative interactions between local stations. We call this Pilot Aware Neighbor. And here's how it works. Assume that an aircraft takes off from Airfield A and is picked up by its Atom Grid base station and climb out and en route, identifying it by its unique ICAO code. In mountains or even hills, if the aircraft is flying low, after a while the aircraft may be obscured from station A and its location will be lost. However, its location and unique ICAO code will be picked up by stations B, C and possibly D. These stations being connected to the pilot aware neighbor network automatically inform station A of the location of the target aircraft. The pilot aware neighbor function is now enabled on all atom grid sites to minimize topographical obscuration. To be clear, the pilot aware atom grid network collects information on aircraft equipped with pilot aware, FLAM, OGN trackers, FANNET, ADSB out, and mode S transponders. Therefore, pilot aware neighbor works across all technologies, not just pilot aware. Interconnecting sites in this way has other significant advantages, such as enabling the recording of cross-country flights, search and rescue improvements, and improving the edge of coverage between sites. As more stations are installed across the UK and Europe, this will naturally improve the resilience of the system across all technologies. As mentioned elsewhere, we will, with your help, soon have 200 sites installed, and will then move towards 300 hopefully by the end of 2021. We're indebted to the help given by Phil Lee and 360 Radar Limited for his assistance in the generation of MLAT to enable mode S detection with a GPS location. As shown earlier, when an aircraft is in flight, an atom grid ground station will detect all electronic conspicuity signals transmitted. That is Pilot Aware, FLAM, OGN Trackers, FANNET Plus, ADSB, and Mode S transmissions using multilateration. However, detection is not limited to a single station. 
In this screenshot taken early in the development of the Atom Grid network, a randomly chosen aircraft is picked up by five stations. In this instance, the trace is being gathered from its pilot aware transmissions. However, all transmissions are recorded simultaneously. Now we understand the principle. Here is another trace taken again at random using pilot aware transmissions, but it could be any EC transmission. Here, an aircraft takes off from Enston and heads north. After about 20 kilometers, the station at Enston loses contact, probably because of airframe obscuration in the rear direction. However, it can be seen that at the same time, in this case 1215, it is also being picked up by eight additional atom grid stations through signals that are not being obscured by the airframe and are in line of sight of the individual stations. In this way, air to ground contact is not lost at all during the whole flight. The red trace at the bottom shows that using data from multiple stations eliminated air to ground obscuration of the signal throughout the whole flight in this case across the UK Midlands. It's also worthy of note that the signal is also picked up right down to ground level as the aircraft does a couple of circuits at the end of the flight. But do you always need multiple stations to eliminate airframe obscuration? The answer to this is no. To eliminate airframe obscuration, you need correctly designed and correctly installed electronic conspicuity equipment. Here is an example of a single station picking up the EC signals from a correctly installed pilot aware unit. In this case, installed in a Cessna training aircraft. As can be seen, the aircraft is detected doing three circuits at a height of approximately 850 feet. It can be seen that there is no obscuration throughout the flight, even though the aircraft is being picked up by a single station. Again, it's picked up down to ground level. This time, we do know the aircraft. It's one of the London Pilot Centre's training aircraft. It's fitted with a carry-on pilot aware Rosetta using an internal GPS mouse mounted on the dashboard and internal antennas in each corner of the windscreen. We hope that this video has given you more insight into why ground networks should be included for improved situational awareness for general aviation, both now and in the future. Multiple EC devices will be with us for a long time, as no one system meets the needs of all users. Also, as you have invested in the EC of your choice, you want to be sure you get the most out of it. Ground stations, and in particular the Atom Grid Network, can do this. If you are encouraged to install an Atom Grid ground station at your flying site or personal location, then we'd love to hear from you. While stocks last, we will help by providing some of the electronics and the software for free. In addition, when joining the Pilot Aware Atom Grid community, you will have access to the fantastic Virtual Radar server. This will show you all the aircraft in the vicinity of the installation and will of course be linked to other sites using Pilot Aware Neighbour. When installed, you can have as many screens as you want, so one in the control tower and one in the clubhouse of school is okay. With this, you can see where your colleagues are flying across the UK and even Europe, and all at low level. It's very good. However, Please remember at the moment, this cannot be used for air traffic management or air traffic control. And as you would expect, Pilot Aware Atom Grid is supported by a full network management suite with automatic software updates. So that's all for this video. There will be more coming along soon, so please subscribe and thumbs up if you liked it. And we look forward to seeing you the next time.